everybody, Lizard for Life here, bringing guys a brand new deck profile. This is Demise, Armageddon, Oblivion, whatever you want to call this deck. <laughs> You're probably wondering what the heck's up with the Cyber Angels. So, I, I, this deck is so incredibly confusing. I'm planning on doing a full video on Demise later on, uh, explaining my qualms with the deck. But basically, this deck is super polarizing with what Konami wanted to do with it. They gave them two level four rituals, two level 10 rituals, and said, hey, you want to summon the level 10s using nothing but ritual monsters. But however, the ritual spell needs you to use exactly 10 levels as material but we gave you two level four rituals to go along with it but the originals were level eights what the hell <laughs> it's really confusing so and this is the build that i've been working on it's working really well i've been having a lot of fun with it it's a heck of a lot better than a lot of builds that i've seen that are still trying to cling to the original uh you know the original demise the original oblivion I don't think either of those two are worth playing anymore, and you're going to see that I have dropped the original Demise and the original Oblivion entirely. I initially dropped Oblivion because she just isn't good. She's a double attacker with 2300 attack and in a deck that has no way of actually increasing her attack until I added Ben 10. Uh, sorry, uh, what was uh, Eda 10? <laughs> uh, until I added Eda 10. But even then, she just wasn't worth putting back in. And then your big demise, uh, level 8, the original, I tried to keep him in as long as I could, but I've just found that I never actually used him or wanted to use him, and he just was never good enough to summon. So I've completely dropped the originals, and I feel like that's the way to go. I, I In my experience, it's greatly boosted the consistency, greatly boosted the efficiency of the deck, and it's been just doing a lot better ever since I dropped them. And that's... Just my opinion though. Is it the best build? I don't know. I want to see what your guys' opinions are, so leave your comments down below and all those likes and all that cool stuff. Uh, let's get on a deck profile. <laughs> I hope that didn't take too long. I tend to ramble. So first and foremost, we got Triple Cyber Angel Ben 10. Uh, the big thing is, is that you don't really care about her on-field effect. Yeah, she's cool. She's got Flaming Man's effect, but in reverse for uh, defense damage instead, but that's not actually what you're using her for. The big thing is her searching effect, and the fact that she's a level 6 ritual. So, whenever she is tributed, you can search out any of your light fairies from your deck to, the grip, uh, from your, deck to your hand. That can go for uh, Edaton, that can go for either of the two Oblivions uh, that you play. Well, that I'm playing in this build, or a Manju, or several other cards uh, that you can mess around with in the deck. So, really great right there, uh, and that's a big thing. Then I got triple E to 10. Originally I was only playing two E to 10, but I found more and more that I wanted to play more than two. So if she's ritual summon, you can add any of your ritual spells from your deck or graveyard to your hand. That's pretty cool. And then also if she's tributed, you can increase all ritual monsters you control. It's attack by a thousand permanently. That's really good, especially when using in tandem uh, to summon uh, the big oblivion because the big oblivion or ruin or whatever her name is, uh, she, she's, the, she's the double attacker. She wants to attack multiple times. You want to be able to have her at more than 3k. Uh, really cool card overall for the deck. And then we got what really makes the deck. The Incantations. So, Talismandra, you can reveal a monster, a ritual monster in your hand, special summon him, and an incantation from your deck. If he's summoned uh, from the deck, you can add a ritual monster from your deck to your hand. And then if Candle does the same thing, but revealing a ritual spell in your hand, and then uh, summons a ritual monster, I mean, sorry, an incantation from your deck, and if he is summoned from the deck, you can add a ritual spell from your deck to your hand. Uh, while you control these monsters, you cannot summon from your extra deck, and uh, both of them are hard once per turn. And they don't really get super great until we get the next incantations, but I'm not sure how I'm going to work those guys into this deck. <laughs> but uh, these work wonders. Just being able to search out any of your dudes while also getting 10 stars on field for ritual summons is amazing. I can't wait to test these guys out in Gishki as well, which is my next goal. <laughs> uh, works wonders for this deck and all virtual decks out there. I absolutely love these two. Amazing, phenomenal cards. Great job on card design, Konami. You actually did something right for a change. <laughs> Moving on, we got triple... Uh, good old Manju. I mean, it's a ritual deck. You want something in here and you can search them off of Ben 10 being tributed. Uh, whenever he's normal summon, you can add a ritual monster or ritual spell from your deck to your hand. Kind of self-explanatory on why you play him. Really great card overall, though. 
Moving on, first up for the rituals, for the actual meat and potatoes of the deck of what you are going to be summoning, Demise, Supreme King of Armageddon. Uh, if he's ritual summoned using only uh, ritual monsters, he you can do his main effect without paying life points, which is once per turn. He can pay 2,000 life points to destroy all other cards on the field. Uh, while he's on the field, ritual monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. And uh, yeah, that's just pretty cool. <laughs> oh yeah, and he cancels Demise, King of Armageddon while on the field or in your hand. Pretty cool. And then we also got good old Ruin, a Supreme Queen of the Mai, sorry, of Oblivion. Uh, basically similar to her thing. Uh, if she's ritual summoned using only ritual monsters, she can attack up to two monsters uh, during that turn, well, uh, during its turn. <clears throat> While she's on the field, your ritual monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects. And then, uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> but she counts as Ruin, which is cool and all. And, uh, oh yeah, if she destroys a monster in, by battle, uh, she does damage to your opponent uh, equal to that monster's attack power. And I forgot to mention it, but uh, Supreme Demise does burn damage for each card destroyed by 200. So pretty cool effect damage uh, that both of them have, but it's not really anything that's going to make a super big deal. Other than Ruin, if you summon her off of using E to 10, because then you get a 3900 double attacker who also inflicts effect damage to your opponent. So it's just amazing. Then we also got two of the Little Demise and two of the Little Oblivion, but we'll get to her in a minute. Typically speaking, you're not going to Ritual Summon either of these two. That's the ideal. You don't want to Ritual Summon these two because you want to use them as fodder along with Eta 10 or Ben 10 to make the big level 10 monsters. You know, so it's, uh, Supreme Demise or Supreme Ruin. Uh, and then if you do use these two as Ritual Materials, uh, you get some bonus effects. Uh, if they are used for ritual summons, Demise uh, grants one ritual monster you control the uh, ability to wear it at monster. If it activates its effects, your opponent cannot activate anything in response to it. Obviously, you want to use that on Big Demise. And then Ruin, uh, if she's used for ritual summon, you can target one ritual monster you control. Uh, whenever that card attacks, your opponent cannot activate anything in response. They also have miniature versions of the big monster's effects. Uh, if Ruin was ritual summoned, she can attack twice, uh, well, two monsters. And then if uh, the Little Demise is ritual summoned, you have to destroy one card on the field. That is a mandatory effect, so if you summon him by himself, you're popping himself. And that's very, very stupid. I don't know what was going to be thinking with that, but I digress. And they also have pretty decent attack values, but for ritual monsters, they should really have more. <laughs> Moving on, we got double ritual sanctuary. I was testing out the uh, ritual, sp uh, sorry, the uh, field spell for demise, but it's just not good. It doesn't do enough for the deck. It doesn't offer you enough uh, value to play it over ritual sanctuary. You don't get any search power. Sure, you get a draw power. Sure, you get the ability to pop a card every once in a while. And sure, you can manipulate your ritual monsters levels so that you can actually use nothing but ritual monsters for the ritual monster summons, but none of those are worth it. You get one draw, cool. You get to pop one monster, cool. Demise pops everything. It's not good. Uh, I don't like the rich, the field spell for Demise at all. The Ritual Sanctuary is amazing though. Once per turn, you can pitch a spell card uh, from your hand to add one Ritual Spell or, uh, sorry, one Light Fairy, uh, God, what was it again? You can add one Light Ritual Monster or one Ritual Spell card from your deck to your hand, and then you can shuffle any number of spell cards from your graveyard into the deck, then target one Light Fairy Monster in your graveyard, special summon it, uh, so long as its level equals the number of Ritual uh, of Spells that you shuffled back. So not only does it search out a Light Fairy or a Ritual Spell, but it also can be a Monster Reborn, which can be a great boon uh, whenever it comes to bringing back you're like Manju or something. Sure, you don't do that too much, but you can shuffle back your ritual spells and stuff, which is great. Absolutely phenomenal card. Then we got triple preparation of rites. Uh, you know, we've got how many? Let's see, four, and then, yeah, we got 10 level seven or lower ritual monsters. Actually, they're all level six or lower, <laughs> level six and four. Uh, so this card searches them all out and then also gets your ritual spell from your grave to your hand. Absolutely amazing card for this deck. No, we cannot use pre-prep because none of them specifically say Big Demise or Little Demise or anything. They only say Demise or Ruin, the originals. And that's not good. <laughs> 
Uh, then we got triple end of the world as well as double cycle of the world. So now why am I playing two cycle? <laughs> because cycle recycles itself, which is funny, uh, from your graveyard to your deck to add end of the world from your deck to your hand. So you don't need to play as many cycles because it just puts itself back in the deck anyways, which is great. So that's wonderful so you don't have to play as many of it. This is where another problem with the uh, archetype comes in though, where in end of the world you can use monsters from your hand or field, but the levels must equal to the monster's level, while Cycle of the World can exceed the level, but has to use monsters only on the field. This is really stupid, and I don't like that design at all. It's very obnoxious and really hinders the deck. Also, I do not play Turning of the World because you must tribute ritual monsters, uh, which can be very situational. Yes, that's the whole point of the deck, and it can only summon the original Demise or Ruin from your deck because Big Demise and Big Ruin do not count as original Demise or Ruin while in the deck. Gotta love all this wonderful self-contradictory uh, archetype support Konami. I love you guys for doing that. You totally did not bone this deck at all. <laughs> Moving on, we got double pot of desires for the extra draw power. Uh, and double alert again for the extra draw power. One monster born for the extra monster power to try and bring back my big guys so I can possibly tribute them off for the big guys or for uh, other stuff. <laughs> and then because this card is actually strangely good in this deck, uh, one Machine Angel Ritual. So this card is the ritual spell for the Cyber Angels. Uh, yeah, you might use this to summon out one of the Cyber Angels every once in a while, like once in a blue moon. And it has come up every once in a while, tributing E to 10, summon Ben 10, so then I get a power buff for my uh, Ben 10. And then I got a 2800 beater who does pierce, well not piercing, but burn damage. Or tributing uh, Ben 10 for to summon Eda 10, so then I get to search out a ritual monster and a ritual spell, which is just a million times better. I love that. It's really good. Uh, not to mention this card while it's in the graveyard acts as a sort of return of the Dragon Lords for this deck, but for your light fairies. Uh, if a light fairy you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish it instead. That can save Ruin, that can save Little Ruin, that can save any of your Cyber Angels or your Manju. That can save a lot of stuff, and the big thing is that it can save your uh, Big Ruin because while she can't be destroyed by card effects, she still can be destroyed by battle, which your opponent might actually end up going through and doing, and I found that this does come up every once in a while. So one Machine Angel Ritual has actually been really good for this deck. And then that's it. I'm not playing an extra deck because really this deck doesn't need it. You can't make an extra deck at all, really. Hardly ever. Uh, if they ever release a generic like Link monster that specializes in helping out rituals, then yeah, I'd totally play that. But there's just nothing that, can, that you can really summon. The incantations lock you out of your extra deck. Uh, you generally don't have enough monsters ever to be able to make a Link or Xyz of any kind whatsoever. This deck has to go through a hoop and a hurdle to get out one monster, much less two. It's very rare that you will ever be able to go into your extra deck in a ever. <laughs> I, I've been playing this deck a lot and I think there's only been one time where I could make an extract monster and that was just a Gustav Max. Now that being said, do I think you should play no extract? No, that's not at all. Uh, go ahead and play any links that you feel necessary, especially the nightmares. Uh, those do help out a lot if you do get the ability to make them. But uh, generally speaking, your super demise is going to be able to take care of things. Likewise, so is your super ruin. Uh, so again, you don't have the capability of making extra deck monsters at all in this deck, really, uh, unless you make some changes to it, which I encourage you to. I'm, this is not the best build at all, and I do encourage you guys to leave your comments down below and tell me what you guys think I should change around in this deck, uh, what you would do. If you like this build at all, would you still play the original Ruin and Demise? Uh, what do you guys think of this deck? Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day if it's your birthday. And heck, well, heck, have a great day in general. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday, everybody. Peace out and goodbye.